be ready around this bitch. <laughs> Tell her. <laughs> There's my Sue Ann. There she is. <laughs> anyway, everyone, welcome back to the True Rock and Roll Podcast. And today we are doing Sly in the Family Stone. We've been waiting. We really wanted to do him for a while. And we just said we can't wait any longer. We just got to go ahead and do it. So let's get started. Sly in the Family Stone. My God. We love us some Sly, boy. Come what on, would the King. world have been like without Sly and the Family Stone? Right? Start it off, King. Come on, bro. <laughs> well, Sly was a homeboy from Dallas, not 20, 30 miles from Dallas, actually, Denton, Texas. Oh, wow. So, and once again, we got a lot of good entertainers coming out of Texas and Dallas. Yes, as, as you do. But Sly was one of a kind. He he, he wrote for everybody too. You know, people, he don't give yeah. recognition like he should. He he, he was a hell of an entertainer, you know. And at the age right. of seven years, seven years old, he was arranging music. At seven yeah, years, he old. was a genius. Yeah, he he really was, was a genius. genius. Just like you know, he, Sly was one of a kind. But he right. And, uh, and, and and very arrogant as well. <laughs> but when he got really, what do you mean in, by that? You mean well, what do you mean by very arrogant? Because I think sometimes people well, don't know what you mean when you say that. See, you can be arrogant in a good way and arrogant in a, in a bad way as well. Uh huh. You can uh -huh. tell people, well, I know I'm good. And okay. Take, he was self confident. <laughs> <laughs> he was extremely self confident. And you know, a lot of people don't know that all of that music that came out of Hate Ashbury in the 1960s, yeah. Sly produced a lot of those acts. Yeah. That's what I'm and saying. And he right. was like, like a major yeah. DJ in San Francisco. And he yes. produced all the jingles for the radio yes. station. He did. He was just an all around, like, M Hotep. Genius spirit, you know, and, and he did that out of the love of entertainment. He, he he wasn't making that much money doing that as well back then, you know. Mm -hmm. You got to understand, you know, uh, because he was doing so much, he wasn't getting paid like he should have got paid. Yeah, but uh, well, and then he, and then you know, a lot of people don't really give him credit for like making a band that was all different kinds of people. He didn't care what color you were. If you were a good musician, you could be in his band. You know. That's right. That's right. That's right. What do you think, Sue Ann? I I toured with him for ten days. It was you it, did. It, yeah. Oh my Japan. gosh! I went I went to Japan with Sly Stone. Okay. Oh my 20, gosh. Twenty twelve, and um, with Rufus and man, he. It was, we played at the Blue Note, but four, no, we did, 
we did 10, 10 shows, I think, in 14 days, something like that. And I'm telling wow. you, man, every night this dude was on. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. I mean, he was... Anyway, let's... Go ahead. I, I mean, I've, Sorry. I've got some stories, man. I mean, yeah, I'm yeah. telling you. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's finish watching, and then you can tell us some stories, okay? Yes. I'll tell you one story, yeah. <laughs> okay. I like the fact that I like the fact that when he he used to have them horns on top of his vocal. I mean, he wouldn't even <laughs> care. He would just because he was a. I mean, he was just amazing. But there was there was a, there was he would call me Green Eyes, and he <laughs> would, and every time that I would you know I'd be singing. Uh, uh, Everybody is a star. He used to just. He used to walk right over to me and just be like in my mouth, looking at me like going, that's green eyes right there. 
<laughs> That's green eyes right there. He would love when I come on. But one time I remember he was, you know, he had more hits than George Clinton did. I don't know if you knew that. Yeah, but yeah I did. Yes, he had right. more hits than George Clinton. And that that's like, wow. But one time he was on the plane with George Clinton and George Clinton had first class. And they stuck Sly in the back of the plane and he was asleep. And so the, the lady, it, you know, the whole band was up front. They had Sly in the back. And so um, <clears throat> the the agent came back there and seen him. And she said, sir, would you like something? She didn't know he was at first. She said, would you like something to eat? And he woke up. He said, uh, you know, no, thank you. And then she said, are you Sly Stone? He said, yeah, I am. He said, why are you sitting back here? He said, oh, I, I was just sleeping. He did. She got on that. She got on there. She said, "Ladies and gentlemen, I just want to introduce a legend on our plane." She didn't. Have, she didn't say nothing about George Clinton. I would like to introduce <laughs> a legend on our plane. We have Sly Stone on the plane, and everybody started clapping. And she woke him up, and she said, "Hold on." She said, "Hold on." She told him. She she told him get up. She took him up front and said, "Here, you sit here, sir. You need to be in first class." Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Give him his and props. I, I give him his props. You know, and I tell you, man, but being on the road with him was quite an experience, but it'll be in the book, all of that stuff. Well, Sue Ann, I know why he was all up in your face, because you're fabulous. You know, uh, once again, by Sly, he has so many different vocal cords. I mean, uh, he could sing any kind of way. Anyway. <laughs> he was a mess. I mean, he was unbelievable. He, he would just, be playing. Key, he would be playing <laughs> piano and just be. Yeah. And be. Yeah. I mean, yes, he yeah. just be. Woo! You'd be like his, his voice just sounded so rich. It, and it mm -hmm. was sexy. It was sexy voice. He had a sexy voice. Very I mean, sweet like guy, no though. Humble. Yes. Yes. He was very humble. I don't. I don't. Yeah. I mean, you know, of course, he's a superstar to me always. Well, Joanne will tell you that I'm hooked on Sly every time I get in my car. That's what we hear. <laughs> that's right. That's right. You know, if the, I'm, I'm trying to think of the name of the album, but the one with babies making babies on it. I love babies that album. Yeah. And I just babies. play it over and over and over again. You know? From the, from the womb to the tomb. And from the womb mother. to the tomb. <laughs> babies <laughs> making <laughs> babies. And then he had that one, he was way ahead of his time when he did, Don't Call Me Nigga. Whitey. Whitey. Don't it call went, me. It, it, went Whitey. One. it went number one. Yeah. <laughs> it went number one. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think I'm going to listen anyway, to him. Anyway. I know. I'm going to have to listen to him again, too. You know. Anyway, y'all, thank you so much for joining us for another True Rock and Roll podcast. Give us a thumbs up. Show us you love us. We got some merchandise. We hope you buy something. And we will see you next time. Thanks for joining us. Bye. Ciao. Bye.